Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online series 12 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. In the last episode, which I've linked down in the description below, I tried out a Calyrex, Ice Rider, and Palkia team. This is one of the strongest archetypes in the format at the moment, and so we'll be playing a couple more matches with it today. Details for the team, including a rental and pacer in the description below, if you want to try it out yourselves. Thanks so much as always for watching Road to Rank. If you enjoyed, please share your support by leaving a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. And question of the day today, kind of a fun one, but I want to know what Pokemon you think deserves a buff going into Gen 9. For me personally, I think, you know, some of the dragon types definitely are a lot weaker than their counterparts. For example, Flygon. And so, yeah, I'd like to see some of those maybe get a little bit more uh, love, uh, especially because, yeah, dragons in general are just so, so strong competitive Pokemon and just in Pokemon overall. So let me know yours in the comment section below and let's get started. Alright, getting into things here, and this feels fitting, a Palkia, Calyrex, Ice Rider, Mirror. We've got five of the six same Pokemon, the difference is that they have Aleki, whereas I have Indidi. Okay. Now, the um, Palkia, Calyrex, uh, like, team my opponent's using could be the team that finished second in the Australian regionals, which took place uh, about a week ago or so. Yeah, I don't remember the full sets of that, though. Hmm. The dynamic between how our Palkias and Calyrex is, like, the speeds, I think is really intriguing here. Swords Dance Calyrex can be very nice. I wonder if I just play towards that, honestly. Like, I, in all my games so far, I'm always just leading Palkia, but what if I just, like, aggressively play towards Calyrex instead? Like, Calyrex, Indidi, Palkia, Amoongus. Uh, I think Amoongus is a must-bring in this matchup. Spore is just way too valuable, and not only does it give me a Spore option, but it also gives me a switch in into their Spores, because otherwise, like, their Amoongus could cause some problems. Um, I don't really love Incineroar because it's terrible into Palkia, and it's also not amazing into Calyrex. Like, it's good into for the Intimidate and the will -Wisp, but... Given that they're, you know, they also have a Palkia, it makes me a little bit more hesitant. Although, because we have Focus Sessions in here, it actually would be potentially worthwhile. Uh, I just think it's not as good as all the other Pokemon that I've decided to bring here. They go with Calyrex and Incin. Interesting. Okay. Like, if I led Incin plus Calyrex here, this actually would have been pretty sweet. It's okay, though, right? Because, like, you can um, click Fake Out on turn one. So, if I were them, it's probably just a parting shot. Um, follow me swords dance turn one is pretty safe like i want to get two swords dances off in this game i think it's funny i was just talking about how i didn't want to bring Ensign, but Ensign actually would have been very good here against this specific lead i don't regret not leading it though because i was trying to counter all the like the palkia combinations that they had and they did a good job not playing towards that but I think Swords Dance can give us a huge edge in this matchup, so it's why I'm just going to follow me Swords Dance. Follow me just to, um, to redirect a potential parting shot away from the Incineroar. We'll get Swords Dance up. Incin will probably parting shots. So you can just bring us back to neutral, but then the thing is, I can get another Swords Dance off as you're switching in. Oh, they're actually going to commit the Dynamax. Dynamax Incin here would actually be pretty cool. I don't think it is, but... Yeah. Okay. Um, what does this mean? I mean, I don't think you should one-shot my NED here. I get Swords Dance up, which is very good. And I don't want to set up Trick Room quite yet. Although, I have Amoongus in the back, so Trick Room isn't necessarily bad. Yep, parting shot. Okay, no problem. So the idea is, yes, I'll be at plus one, then they can switch Instant back in next turn, but then I can just go for another Follow Me into Swords Dance. I guess what gets dicey here is if they... Well, actually, even if you have Max Steel Spike, it's not that bad, in my opinion. Hmm, they bring in a Moongus. Okay, yeah, that's smart. Like, they're expecting me to click Trick Room here, right? And that's exactly what we don't want to do right now. <laughs> Especially because we're faster than their Calyrex as well. This is perfect because they're Hailstormy, meaning I don't have to worry about a Focus Ash on the Moongus anymore. Okay, nice. 177 down to 29, so I took, what, 148 damage? Okay. 
Amoongus back out onto Incineroar makes the most sense right now. Or you just protect. I could greet another Swords Dance here. Another Swords Dance could win me the game, but I could also throw the game completely away if they just spore me here. So I don't know if it's worth it, to be honest. Okay. I think because I have the Dynamax advantage right now, you know what, actually, I'm down to just Glacial Lance this turn, I think, and follow me. I don't want to Dynamax and just have them switch Amoongus out. Yeah, they're going to switch. Like, uh, I could have Max Quake there, right? But if I Max Quake, it also gets a little bit dicey. I, I just, like, it's tempting to go for the win with the Swords Dance there. Because I do think if I get another Swords Dance off, I just command so much positioning at that point. Because then I can just Dynamax Calyrex. I'm at plus two. Quake into the instant slot. You have no switches into it whatsoever. And then go from there. But I'm also okay getting a little bit of free damage right now because right now my opponent's already committed two turns of Dynamax, right? To pick up one KO. The awkward here uh, thing for me, though, is because I didn't bring the Incineroar dealing with this Calyrex is actually kind of painful. But... Ah, actually, because of that special defense boost... Ah, that's kind of annoying, because I don't know if a Palkia Max will KO Insin. They're safety goggles. Uh, okay. That's good to know. Okay. Mm. So I'm at neutral now. What I want to do is Swords Dance. Max. And Wormwind. But with that Quake boost, that was a good Quake by them, by the way. Mm. I just don't want to get hit by a parting shot, is all right. I could also see them switching Insim hard out into Amoongus. Okay, I'm gonna go for the Warm Wind. Insim surviving is not the end of the world and they do switch. Okay, that is super good for me. Nice. Oh! That's even better. <laughs> that's a pleasant surprise. Okay, nice. We have to be very patient in this one, but I think the patience now will pay off barring crits because I get a free KO onto your Palkia. So now your damage output, that's like half the damage, right? We get a KO onto that. I decrease Calyrex's attack back to neutral, and I never have to click Trick Room in this game because I already outspeed you with Palkia and Calyrex. The one thing I was nervous about was their Palkia being faster, but yeah, that was a risky switch, and now we punish them so heavily for it. Because in my head, I was like, okay, even if the Incineroar survives and it gets a parting shot off, well, I'll decrease Calyrex's attack back to neutral, and I'll get a free Swords Dance off with Calyrex. So this should be a game-defining turn. Like, I think... It felt somewhat even up until now, even though, you know, I had kind of conserved my Dynamax and that was intentional. And now it should pay off really, really heavily. And they just Hailstorm. Beautiful. And you're back to neutral, so really shouldn't do that much damage. Let's see if it does even half. Beautiful. Uh, this is where setting up Psychic Terrain early game is so nice as well, because the Incineroar just has a really tough time doing much right now. We also know it's Goggles, right? And so confirming that item is valuable. And they just bring in Amoongus. Perfect. Uh, this is still losable, though, especially if they're Focus Ash Amoongus. What's their play? It's to set up Trick Room right now, right? Yeah, yeah, this is actually still far from over. My plus two. Your play would be to protect Amoongus and set up Trick Room with Calyrex. So I can do one thing. I can read into them setting up Trick Room, or I can just go, like... Glacial Lance covers for Amoongus going for anything. Um... Would I Wormwind, Geyser? Uh, I think decreasing their attack here is fine. Okay, I like this play by them. Yep, yep, this is smart. 
switch into Ensign, decrease my attack, meaning you will get Trick Room up. I was thinking pretty heavily about clicking Trick Room with my Calyrex, but I really didn't want to, like, set it up for them for free. Like, I'd at least, like, want to force my opponent to set it up right now, right? Not bad damage. I wonder if High Horsepower actually would have just gotten the knockout there, but that's okay. Like, I think the main thing we can leverage right now is my Dynamax advantage. And also, this next turn, you don't have Amoongus out on the field, so you don't pressure me with that. Your Incinera also can't heal up because it doesn't have a berry. Meaning, like, each Glacial Lance really chips away at it. Look at that, right? Like, that's two Pokemon that resisted Glacial Lance, and we did that much damage to both. Okay, cool. Also, Calyrex is at minus two attack right now, so it just really doesn't do any damage. Uh, so the thing to think about here is... Psychic Train is still up, so you can't fake out me, which is a very big deal. So I'm down to just Glacial Lance here. Ah, the other consideration is actually just reversing Trick Room right now. I'm kind of down for that, actually, I think. Yeah, reverse Trick Room and then just Warm Wind into Calyrex to cover for them trying to stop the reversal. Beautiful, they switch out. Uh, this should win me the game, barring a... Oh, they actually forgot about Terrain. Okay, cool. That makes things even easier. Uh, I think actually because they forgot about that and didn't go for a parting shot. Was that a crit? Uh, actually, no, wait, we don't. Uh, we're not at minus one. Yeah, nice. Their only out there would have been maybe a parting shot, but at this point, they've just taken way too much damage. And even if you parting shot, I just get to reverse your trick room and just glacial lance everything. Cool. <laughs> I feel like this team is very good at making people, uh, people, yeah, quit because it, you can have such powerful turns with this, with this team. So, yeah, I am generally pretty pleased about how I played this. I think we did a good job, um, you know, with the Calyrex and I think Swords Dance was the game changer in this match. If we didn't have Swords Dance, it'd be a lot harder, but the thing is like, my opponent kept cycling in and out and in and out and you know for a while i was looking a little bit silly like not nailing anything on the switch ins but i felt better playing safe rather than like throwing the game away because i let amoongus get a single spore off yes it's it feels good to like make a prediction and predict the amoongus to switch out but i was in a position where things were pretty good even if i you know uh wasn't necessarily gaining a major advantage and that's because i knew okay i have a faster calyrex i've got swords dance on it as well so in this matchup 1v1 um you know i, I should be in a favorable position so getting them to Dynamax early was really good, and then NDD having that Psychic turning up was also really helpful. But even if Incineroar didn't mess up that turn and went for a parting shot, I think there's basically no way you can really win. Because if you parting... Actually, the only way you can win is if you crit an attack onto Calyrex, like a crit Flare Blitz or Darkest Lariat for a KO. Um, that would give you an out. But if you're not knocking out Incinero uh, Calyrex that turn, I should have the game sealed up. So yeah. All right, let's keep things going. Next game here, and we are up against Zashi and Evil Tall in St. Lando, Amungus Aleki. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a rental team created by a Japanese player called Snow, and I was actually going to feature it, um, either the team or two teams after this. Well, if I lose here, then I can say I got wrecked by this team and uh, feature it immediately. <laughs> so let's see. It's Life Orb, Evil Tall, White Orb, Landorus. I don't remember the Amung uh, items on Amungus or Aleki, though. So my approach against Evil Tall in the previous episode was to lead Incin Amoongus and basically like get a parting shot off and then try to set up Trick Room. And I still like that approach here. I think Indity is hard to bring here because of the Evil Tall and I think Porygon doesn't really... Well, Porygon's value would be like ensuring that I get Trick Room up. Maybe it's not terrible. I keep discounting Porygon. I just don't know who I drop for it. I guess it could be Incin. Like, what if I went Porygon Amoongus? Well, then, if you lead Incin, you also you can just fake out Max Airstream turn one. Yeah, that's not great. Maybe with Amoongus and Zacian. Uh, okay. Well, Incin Amoongus is actually one of the best leads against this specifically. So, I guess I'll take it. If I remember correctly, that team also has um, Quick Attack Zacian. I... I'm just not looking forward to the Amoongus battle here. The battle of the fungus. Like, I may actually think about Dynamaxing Incin to max Flare Amoongus in this game. Maybe. We'll see. 
One of the fun things about this situation is for my opponent, if you don't know the team, you have to be nervous about like goggles on Insin. Do I think Max Flare gets the KO here? If it does, it's so worth it. Because it's a free spore on Slozashi and Slot as well. Based off that fake out damage, do I think I'll get a KO? 40. 20. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. This is an example where it's like, if I don't flare, then they're gonna put my emo- They could switch out. Okay, they don't switch out, which is huge. Um, yeah. This is an example of an unconventional Dynamax that makes sense in the context of this matchup right now. Because Spore is such a game changer here, but it's not so much of a game changer if I get put to sleep as well, right? So let's see. Okay, they just Rage Powder. That's fine. It covers for instant targeting them. Unless they have sub here. Ah, no! They actually have sub! Oh! <laughs> I thought I had Quick Attack. Maybe this isn't the rental then. Or maybe I just misremember the rental. Oh, Flare didn't even KO Moongus there. Okay, if anything, this actually ended up being pretty fortunate then, because uh, I thought Flare would get the knockout there. Uh, this next turn you can pivot a Mungus out. Uh, it's actually pretty safe to max. F Ooh, I was gonna say safe to flare and spore that slot. I would just give it up if I were them. Ah oh, man, them having sub makes this so much harder. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have evil tall in the back. Lando's the last one, maybe. Could be a lucky. No, I don't think a lucky makes much sense here. I think it's Lando. I, I mean, I didn't even talk about instant, I guess. Yeah, instant's always safe to have, actually. Okay, I already feel pretty behind in this game, so I'm doubling up on Zashin, but they might just protect Zashin and Spore. Okay, they just Rage Powder. That's fine-ish, but... I took a gamble there. It did not pay off. Uh, part of it is just not knowing how much Maxler would do there, but this Incineroar does not have attack investment, so I shouldn't be surprised that it, you know, failed to pick up KO. Jeez, that's still so much damage. Ah, it doesn't activate my berry, which is probably the most frustrating part about it all. If Flare one-shot Amoongus, I'd also been happy about this outcome, because then I can just Flare Spore the Zacian slot, but I think now this is nearly unwinnable. I, I love this though, right? Because it's like sub on Zacian has so much value specifically for a scenario like this. I just thought in my head that they didn't... Like, this is also why it can be a little bit dangerous to assume your opponent's using a Rental. And um, even if the Pokemon are the same, you know, one fun way is to you know, mix things up a little bit. Can I do anything with Max Strike here? Would it allow all these Pokemon outspeed? Nope. Okay. And Flare here. They should just max Darkness and Mungus. Well, if you do that, actually, you'd activate my berry. I, I just think, okay, if I want to win this game, I need to set up Trick Room, right? And so a Mungus can be valuable as a redirection user for getting Trick Room up. I just don't have a safe switch in either, though. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe it's worth sacrificing one of my Restricteds for it. This was an example of a game where I went all in on the turn with the Moongus Ashing, because if they don't have sub and Flare does one-shot them, well, actually, even if Flare doesn't one-shot them, even if I get Spore on his Ashing, well, no, I, I needed that to KO the Amoongus, so I just estimated the damage poorly there. Especially because the, the, the max ended up being a waste, right? It's like, I didn't get any value out of this Dynamax. Darkness might still KO me through Protect, by the way. Are they doubling up on an Ensign? That's, that's one play I could have made. Just like, hope for them to overextend and just spore Evil Tall. I would have Darkness into Amoongus. Yeah, okay. Does that activate my berry? Or does it just KO me? Ooh, we do survive. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that gives us a slight opportunity then. But, 
it is still rather difficult. Especially because with max darkness now, like my opponent's lowering my special defense. Yeah, great substitute. Great, great sub. What's the end game scenario? What's how do we win this game? It is setting up Trick Room. How do I set up Trick Room though? Zashin will attack first, then Evil Tom, so we need to You can Behemoth Blade Amoongus now. I wanna switch Amoongus out and I don't ever think I get the parting shot off, but Amoongus out. Who would I go into? Behemoth Blade is going into that slot. Maybe a Dark Pulse as well. I think um, Calyrex is the right Pokemon to try to sweep with in the endgame because of Glacial Lance, whereas Polka can only hit one at a time. I, I think this is pretty rough. I think if my opponent doesn't make any major mistakes, they should win the game. But as always, that's counting on your opponent making the right plays, right? I uh, wonder if it was worth sacrificing. Like, switching out instant may have been better. Yeah, they airstream. Okay. This duo is so strong when you stall out your opponent's Dynamax. And my max usage in this game just wasn't optimal. But I don't regret going for it. I guess, like, I should know that damage calc against the Amoongus a little bit better, though. Okay, but the thing is, now if Amoongus survives Behemoth Blade, it is very close as to whether or not it survives. But if I survive, it's just a simple Rage Powder in a Trick Room, which is exactly what I was looking for, and it's on their final turn of Dynamax as well. So then Calyrex and Palkia could definitely sweep through. So I've at least put myself in a position to potentially pull this back, but what this is contingent off is Amoongus surviving a Behemoth Blade, which it didn't take especially well earlier. I think it's basically a damage roll here. Oh, they just go for sub. Interesting. Okay. Well, by subbing there, I actually think that gives me an out. It depends on if the Glacial Lance breaks Substitute on Zacian's end. I mean, I do have Babiri as well, actually, right? And you're not going to have play rough on the Zacian. So I can just Glacial Lance into Flamethrower right now. Uh, with Evil Toe, we saw a Flare, we saw Oblivion Wing, or a Flying-type attack, normally Protect, and then I'm just curious what the Dark-type attack is here, like, are you running Sucker Punch, Dark Pulse? Um, also, one fun play you can do while you have two Trick Room users out, it, I just set up Trick Room, so it's not necessary right now, but let's say, like, we actually make it to the last turn of Trick Room, is clicking Trick Room with both Pokemon to reset it. Uh, now I feel like, I mean, Instant's gotta be their last one if they're playing it like this. I do want to just Glacial Lance and Flamethrower. Also, I need to <laughs> plug in my controller after this. Alright, they stay with both. I just don't know if Glacial Lance breaks the sub here, but even if it doesn't, I can take... Oh, they're just double protecting. That was my opportunity to Swords Dance. Oh, man. Swords Dance may have actually won me the game there. It just felt so risky. But I, since I'm behind in this game, like taking a risk is also, honestly like not a bad idea. It, it, it's like, I, I think right now I'm basically hoping they don't have Vincent in the back. Because if they have Vincent in the back, I think I just lose this game. Well, not necessarily actually. Hold on. I can Glacial Lance Hydro the Evil Tall slot. Yeah, they switch out. Is it Vincent coming in? It is. Oh, I'm just so frustrated. If I click Swords Dance last turn, we'd be in beautiful shape. But because I've got Babiri on Calyrex here, it's still doable. I need to hit this Hydro, though. And I'm not breaking the sub anymore, either. Okay, Hydro hits. Good. I think they had an opportunity to just make the instant switch in last turn, but the double protect makes sense. Oh, they're not blading? Oh, you're not running a fighting type attack. That'll do it. Because normally with the um, 
sub Zacians, you like writing a fighting type attack because otherwise like steel types really wall the um Zacian here but this is smart team construction right because you don't need to worry as much about steel types given that you have max flare evil tall coming from heat wave two turns of trick room left um your play is to just protect evil tall here behemoth blade me right i don't think i have an out here the only out I have for, is for them to throw the game. It would be for them to um, protect, like, Zacian and then just attack with Evil Tall for whatever reason. But, yeah. With this play, they're going to win, so now I'm going to forfeit. But if your opponent has a chance to mess up, you can always, you know, try to go for it. Man, if I had clicked Swords Dance, I would have broken the sub. But then I'd have to double up onto the, uh, the Zacian slot anyway. Yeah. This game, it was mainly me. Well, one, the Zacian set was so clutch. Like, sub plus play rough was the worst combination for me to run into, unfortunately. Um, because sub counters Amoongus and play rough counters Palkia. So. But I love that, right? Because, like, the team that we're using, this composition is, is now becoming more and more meta. And, you know, it's smart to use a Pokemon that's common, but in a slightly unconventional way, to have a major advantage in a matchup that otherwise may give you some trouble. I guess I could have gone for a Glacial Lance crit. No, actually, the Zacian just protects into Behemoth Blade, and there's no out there. So, yeah. I think even if I had clicked Swords Dance with Calyrex, this would not have been a win anyway. So, eh, I guess it would have been doable, because I could at least target the Zacian slot. But I was banking up them having a fighting, like, Sacred Sword, uh, or any fighting type attack, rather than a Play Rough there. But Play Rough is a very nice counter into Palkia. But very, very good move to run, right? Because it dramatically improves your matchup against both Palkia and Evoltal, and those are restricted that are, like... Maybe not the absolute most popular, but just outside of, like, the top maybe two or three. And Evil Toll is very, very good. And that's just great execution by my opponent. Um, so at a best of three, if I were to adjust, it's like, okay, now I know you have Substitute. Now I know that Amoongus can survive and fake out into Max Flare. Uh, try to change things up a little bit. But I don't know what I'd really do. The sub on Zacian makes this kind of a nightmare, to be honest. So I got to think about it a little bit more. But nicely done by my opponent. Let's look for one last one. Last one here, and this is actually one of the other team compositions I was planning on featuring. Um, so, reading right into my mind, but this is uh, another team that did very well in the International Challenge featuring Kyogre, Kingdra, Sheninja, Zacian, Indidi, and Lando. Now, the good thing is about Sheninja is we actually have multiple ways to hit it. Like, four of our Pokemon have a super effective attack into it, but it's never any fun going up against it. Palkia type wising is amazing here. Hmm. I don't know if I want to bring Ince in here. I don't think it contributes much. Also, another thing to do against Ninja potentially is the max Hailstorm. And he just faints from Hail. Uh, I think it's probably Palkia, Indidi, Amoongus, Calyrex. I'm just trying to figure out in what order. I'm not opposed to a Palkia NDD lead, set up Trick Room, and then put things to sleep with Amoongus under Trick Room, I think. And, um, both Pal- I mean, Palkia is a very good max option here. Especially because they have Kyogre. Like, if they set up the rain, Geyser just does so much immediately. Uh, so, let's see. Hey, Kyogre and Kingdra. I've run into Focus Sash Yong Kingdra recently, and that scares me a little bit. <laughs> but I think here it's pretty free to just follow me Trick Room turn one. Yeah, I like that. Faster with Kyogre, get to confirm that. I don't want to go for a Dragon type attack into Kingdra because I think that switching to Shininja makes sense. Uh, I, I could go for a uh, Protect here, but I don't think it's worth greeting it, because if I just lose Palkia, it's really bad. Yeah, okay, they don't max or switch out either. Could just be a Water Spout into a Dragon Pulse. Ooh! It is Physical Kingdra. That's neat. Okay, that works for me, though. Uh, this next turn is where things get interesting, right? They're going to have Zacian, and I would think Shedinja as their fourth. A 
Humongous is like the obvious thing to bring in right now, but I almost want to bring in Calyrex and just sword stance with this. Because this turn, I want to play a little bit more aggressively this turn, I think. It's just ally switch from Shininja in subsequent turns I'm worried about. But, like, I want a spatial ran into the Swords Dance here. They're, they're, this play is a little bit risky because they could just stay in. They could just attack with both right now. Maybe they didn't even bring Shininja. But one of the upsides of this team. Okay, Kyogre is the one switching out. That's where Shedinja is going into. Okay. <laughs> and they don't switch out Kingdra or protect it. Okay. That's nicely done. I wonder if you even KO me here, though. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Uh, I'm done a flamethrower here, and honestly, go for another sword stance. They might willow with me, but that's fine. I wish you could self-target yourself with hailstorm. I actually would consider doing that right now if I could. This is where um, clicking double trick room might actually be relevant as well. And the last turn of trick room. Okay, so I'm faster than your Shedinja, that's good to know. I mean, Balance just does such insignificant damage. Oh, Poltergeist is gonna hurt, though. That's actually really gonna hurt, uh-oh. Okay, we still take it, that's fine. Flamethrower. Yep, there's Sash. There's Bounce. Ugh, oh, ally switch is the thing to watch out for this next turn. I mean, they know I have flamethrower right now, so they're going to be a little bit more nervous. This turn is who do I target? Okay, I'm targeting Kingdra. I'm not reading into an ally switch here. Okay, if we get this turn correctly, I think it wins us the game. Because then I can Pollen Puff into... <sighs> Shouldn't just just such a nightmare to go up against? Like, I could have gone for Glacial Lands here, but then I just die to a Pulsar, guys, and that's really bad. I need a max here for HP. I might even still faint to a Pulsar, guys, TBH. Okay, they don't ally switch, which is huge, though, so that in itself is good. So this should be a double KO, but... Yeah, I um, I kind of underestimated Shedinja's damage I'll put into Calyrex Ice Rider, and that wasn't great on my end. It'll be close as to whether or not I survive a Poltergeist here. If we faint, that's really bad news for me. If we survive, then I'm at plus 5 attack, right? Okay. Oh, 26 HP. Okay. The thing is, now you can just max guard. Uh, well, what is their final 2 as well? Is there any spread damage? Kyogre obviously is one of them. Oh, right, it's Zacian. I wonder if a plus five qu Quake one-shot Zacian. Because here's the interesting thing, right? Like, Kingdra's the clear max option with their team, so now you're actually kind of forced to Dynamax Kyogre, but you might not necessarily want to. I think my play here is... They probably will double protect. Oh, I guess we didn't see the item on Kyogre. Does it make sense to be Scarf Kyogre? That could be the case. Because if you're Scarf Ogre, I can just, um, 
I, know, I wish I knew how much plus five Max Quake does under Trick Room. Because the play I want to make, assuming they double protect, is Pollen Puff into Max Quake, but they could protect Zacian, Dynamax Kyogre. Uh, I went for Pollen Puff Quake. I don't know if that's correct. They definitely could have played it out for at least one more turn, because I don't know your full sets here. Um, if it were Scarf Ogre, if I knew they were Scarf Ogre, I would always just Quake into the Kyogre slot, Rage Potter with the Moongus, because we survive a Behemoth Blade, um, then Zashin just can't really win the 1v1. But, like, they didn't even Dynamax yet there, so they could have maxed Kyogre to win the game, in my opinion. Um... My, my logic there is like a Max Quake gives Amoongus a special defense boost. It does a ton of damage through Protect to Zacian. Maybe just even gets the KO outright. Um, if it gets the KO outright, then yeah, my opponent just basically had, I think, very little shot at winning that game, especially with Palkia still in the back. But I didn't feel like that was over by any means. But what a really interesting set of teams here. And both this team and the previous one, I had seen the Pokemon for this team, but I hadn't actually looked into the set specifically. So I didn't realize it was like physical Kingdra um, and, and yeah, Poltergeist Shedinja, which Poltergeist Shedinja isn't really that crazy, but yeah, I just hadn't seen it before. So, uh, or seen it on that team specifically before. So yeah. Anyway, though, this was a really fun episode. And like I mentioned, I think Palkia, Calyrex, Ice Rider, are really one of the best restricted duos that you can use at the moment. And you're going to see a lot of it in the upcoming weeks. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this team. I had a lot of fun playing with it. We had some really incredible games, um, I think, while using it. So I'm always pleased with good games. So yeah, leave a like if you enjoy. Don't forget to answer the question of the day. Details for the team are in the description below. And I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.